Hello, and welcome to Cox Business Cloud Streams Live, an exclusive live forum web series where we take a deep dive into cloud technologies designed to simplify your business, drive productivity, and maximize profitability. I'm Jared Ruth, Director of Marketing for Cox Business, and I'm joined today by my good friend and colleague, Duncan McDonald, who serves as our esteemed Director of Product. How are you doing, Duncan? I'm doing great, Jared. Thanks for uh, inviting me today. Absolutely. So today our, our subject is Microsoft Teams, which is an incredibly powerful business productivity tool uh, packaged up in the Microsoft 365 suite that allows users to communicate, collaborate and automate all in one simple platform. This subject, obviously, Duncan, is near and dear to our hearts here at Cox because we use this uh, daily. Uh, we use Teams daily and it's really changed the way that we do business through the last year allowing us to stay connected remotely throughout 2020 and into 21 uh, without missing a beat and in some ways allowing us to be more productive than ever. Wouldn't you agree? I would, yes. And, and today we're going to really um, highlight some of the great features um, that Teams delivers. We're going to show how Teams is the central nervous system for delivering the great features the office has, how it enhances that and how it drives collaboration to the business, to the heart of the users and how it really enhances that work experience. Love it. Agree. All right. Well, hey, before we dig into it, just wanted to share a couple reminders here as far as uh, the overall event. Um, we are uh, recording today's event, so it's going to be shared following the session. And then if you have any questions throughout the event, go ahead and chat them over using their Q&A panel and uh, we'll get them answered before ending the event. So let's jump in and, and go ahead and get started. So Duncan, you know, one of the things that, that I often talk about with people and business owners, you know, they often reference Teams in the same manner that they would talk about Zoom or Skype, um, maybe GoToMeeting, those types of productivity tools. You know, I think that's a, it's, it's, you know, a great, um, instant messaging tool and video conferencing tool, but it's really so much more than that. Can you just kind of uh, give a quick overview of what Teams is and what really sets it apart from the crowd? Yes, yeah, certainly, and that's uh, that's a great question um, there, Jared. So collaboration tools are not new, and um, Office 365 is not new. Office 365 has been around now for um, over 10 years. Um, but as we got towards the end of um, 2016, 2017, Microsoft saw this great uptick in um, Office 365 in, towards well over 100 million users. And what they saw was that they, the users weren't capitalizing on and they weren't getting the most out of what was really a great tool. This tool delivered storage, it delivered email, it delivered calendaring, it delivered a, a lot of great collaboration features. But even with all of that, users were not getting the most out of it. They weren't collaborating. There wasn't this natural flow um, of how users were really working. That's where Teams came in and Teams became that central hub, that central nervous system to bring users and all those great tools together um, to work. In a, to work and encourage them to work in the natural way that people actually do work. And we're really going to talk about that a lot more in this um, in, the, in, in this uh, session. We're going to talk about how Teams encourages um, the natural flow of how people work, but also encourages the collaboration and, and makes businesses more efficient in doing that. Yeah, I love that. It's a perfect description. I love how you say you know, Teams is a central nervous system because it really is. I, I think of it sometimes as a command center. You know, as we navigated 2020, it became so apparent that, you know, it, it was it was just a phenomenal tool to help us while, you know, we were mostly remote, as you know, and, and having to collaborate and, and share uh, Teams was, was an important part of that and kind of the central piece of that. So very good. Appreciate you kind of going through that with us. Um, you know, before we jump into sort of the features and get into the discussion, just real quick, wanted to do a live poll, understand, um, you know, what, what you all are using out there, get a better understanding of what tools you're using for meetings and collaboration. So 
We've got a poll here. Go ahead and click on it. Um, we've got uh, one option is Microsoft Teams, other is WebEx, Zoom, GoToMeeting, Slack. Maybe there's some other tools that you use, so um, go ahead and click on those. And then we'll come back to this near the end of our, our live session today and, and talk through that. All right, so jumping into it. So when I think about Teams, and again, we talked about it a little bit at a high level. I'm gonna continue here with just some main features. Um, one of the things that, that sticks out to my mind is, is persistent chat or messaging. And and, and what I kind of like to, to reference this is, it, it's sort of like chat or messaging in hyperdrive or in steroids, if you would. Um, Duncan takes steroids, I don't, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, but. But persistent chat allows you to, uh, to really communicate and collaborate with either an individual or a team of individuals um, in a way that, that exists with you as you go in and out of meetings and in and out of you know, a, a project plan. And, and the great thing is, is it continually exists and, and moves with you. So if you ever need to go back and reference you know, conversations you had or anything like that in and out of meetings, you're able to do a quick search and look up that that chat or messaging and understand you know exactly where you left off and in any kind of outstanding items that were were there in front of you. Um, the other great thing that that Teams does again we mentioned it is just the improved meeting experience. It's just you know between you know the backgrounds you can choose and 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 you know the way that you can collaborate with people you know and looking at uh, you know maybe project plans through planner or forms or or potentially you know taking meeting notes even like whiteboard sessions, uh, it makes it really easy. In fact, in some ways, it makes it easier to conduct a meeting than you would than it would be if you were all sitting together in, in one conference room. You know, speaking of whiteboard sessions, for those for those who love, you know, to pick up a, a dry erase marker and, and collaborate with with a whiteboard, um, Teams enables that as well. So so, you know, the great thing is, is when you're in a meeting, you can quickly pull up a whiteboard. You can have that, that visual conversation or ideation session. Um, but even beyond that, you can actually set up the whiteboards prior to the meeting. Um, so you've got your entire conversation ready to kind of walk through. And then as you're showing, you know, your teams or your executives, you know, what you're thinking, you know, those those, those ideas and, and concepts seem to pop off the page and they can be you know, collaborated on together. You know, Duncan mentioned file sh sharing, and that's really a critical part of Teams. Um, it, it, it backdoors with um, with applications like OneDrive and SharePoint, and you know another, a host of other cloud-based storage options. And we'll talk about app integration in a second. But um, it's just a really powerful tool to kind of get a, a good understanding of not only what you're working on, but what your team's working on, and, and others in the organization as well. Um, speaking of app integration, uh, Teams this this is where Teams really shines. So over 3,500 apps today. Uh, that you can integrate quickly, literally with the click of a button, and Duncan's going to talk about it. But um, and and the great news is Microsoft continues to build on that. So so you know even if you've got other applications that sit outside of the Microsoft suite, you can quickly pull them in and use that as a central nervous system here as well. Callan integration uh, is is a no brainer. Teams does a great job of it. In fact, it makes it really easy to schedule new meetings and integrates completely with Outlook as well. So it, it keeps pace with, with your calendar there. And, uh, you know, in fact, a lot of times when I'm moving between meetings, I don't even go back into Outlook. I'll just, you know, end a meeting, jump into another one right in Teams. I don't even have to move out of the application, which is really nice. And then the last thing I want to talk about before I jump into mobility is, is just the automation tools around Teams. So. Let's say quickly you want to create an automation process in your business and you want to have a form that, you know, that, you know, once it's filled out, it, it flows to another department and they can take action on it. Um, Teams automation tools uh, do a really good job of helping you set this up and then making it um, work really well across your organizations. So that's, that's just a quick high level and we're going to dive some deeper into all these things. But Duncan, is there anything else I missed you want to chat about on that? No, I, you know, we're going to dive deeper into all of this. Um, Teams offers um, some great features. The one thing I will point out is every feature um, that exists within Teams is built around you and it's built around making it a more immersive experience. It's built around collaboration and it's built around getting you to take advantage of the broader 
Microsoft 365 ecosystem. So just, just be aware of that and we're going to dive in, we're going to go deeper and we're going to show you how that really does make it a more immersive experience. Excellent. Thanks, Duncan. So the second thing I want to talk about before I pass it back to Duncan to go deeper is, you know, just the, the incredible amount of uh, a functionality that Teams provides when you're when you're thinking about needing to work anyway, anywhere from anywhere. Um, the mobility features of Teams is incredible. So so again, like meeting experiences, uh, you know, it, it's effortless to, you know, whether you're in the office, you're working from home, you're out of the office, maybe on a sales call, heck, maybe even on the golf course, it, it makes it really easy to connect and, and make sure that um, that, you know, you're able to collaborate with your with your employees and with your customers and, and others as well. Um, you know, the simple day to day workflow uh, and, and work with apps and, and workflows, uh, again, whether it's Salesforce, whether it's, you know, um, you know, Marketo, Planner, I mean, heck, uh, is is Duncan will show you even Starbucks for crying out loud. There's an app for that and and uh, Teams does a great job of integrating that and, and making it a part of your workflows. Um, the other really in, exciting thing about Teams is that just from a, you know, a well-being and employee well-being and productivity perspective, Teams provides some incredible insights about your day, how you're using your time and then sort of your efficiency, right? So whether you're the an employee, you're managing employees or maybe you're, you know, the business owner managing the entire organization. You get some really great insights about, you know, about how your team is doing and, and whether they're creating enough time, you know, to to, uh, you know, have focus time and, and to make sure that they that they are getting their work done and not just, you know, in meetings all day long. So so I think that it does a really good job there. Um, it also does a really fantastic job of, of connecting people and driving culture. So, you know, this has been a challenging year. Uh, 2020 was a challenging year, and, and I think we used it a lot just to reconnect with people, make sure that the people were feeling supported, that mentally they were in the right state of mind, and uh, and teams, you know, helped us with all of that. Um, another key feature from a mobility perspective, it, it really manages and secures any device and user from anywhere. So. When you think about you know the incredible amount of cybersecurity threats that are out there today, Teams packages that up for you and makes it really easy to secure your network, secure your data. Um, again, it's all based in the cloud. So you know if you were to lose a device or you know have a, a situation, um, you can quickly and easily get your employees back up and running again. Uh, you know, using this environment included with Microsoft 365 and, and quite frankly, some other um, great tools that, that Cox Business offers too. Um, you know, from an enterprise perspective, just thinking about, you know, enabling rich device experiences for for uh, remote scenarios. Um, you know, this Teams makes it really easy, again, to deploy those and, and make sure that, that your users are supported. And then last but certainly not least, just accessing desktops from in applications from any device so any device anytime uh anywhere you know teams uh, it feels very similar so if you're on a mobile device if you're on a desktop if you're on a, a friend's tablet you know you can really get that same experience in 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 any device and and you know it transfers instantly so if you're getting a if you're getting an, a message on your desktop, you're also going to be getting it in a, on your on your cell phone. If you need to move uh, from your desktop and get on the road for whatever reason, or 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 just get out and take a walk, you can quickly transfer everything to your cell. So it makes it really easy to do that as well. So um, so that's just a quick high level overview, and I'm going to give it over back to Duncan to sort of to do a deep dive into uh, the functionality of, of Teams and some of the great features there. So Duncan, take it away. Thank you. Um, thank you, Jared. Um, so Jared, you did a great a great job um, going over um, what was really a great set of tools that Teams provides, but I think hopefully everybody took another takeaway from that, which was Teams isn't just a great set of tools. Teams also encourages great behavior. 
And that's also at the core of teams, right? So we're going to talk a little bit more about, about that and about the great behavior that, that teams drives. So more effective and secure meetings. So, so teams at its core delivers engaging and inclusive, uh, sorry, and inclusive meetings from anywhere. Jared talked a little bit about that, about the tools that, that um, teams provide you with. It allows you to start your meeting um, from your home. And if we think back pre-COVID, um, myself, Jared, many of my colleagues spent a lot of time traveling. It wasn't uncommon for me to start a meeting at my breakfast table, then continue that meeting in an Uber, finish that meeting um, in the airport, and then potentially have another meeting over Wi-Fi in the air, and then have another meeting at a completely different location. Teams absolutely facilitates this type of um, behavior just because of the nature of the tool. Also collaborate and stay focused before, during and after the meeting. We can't or we, or we should not think of meetings as siloed events. Meetings are just a continuum of much bigger and broader projects. And the Microsoft team have thought this through very carefully. So the meeting itself allows you to be much more collaborative in nature allowing you to do a lot more than just talk in the meeting. You can chat, you can whiteboard, notes are automatically taken during the meeting, and all of this is a much more immersive experience. So I spoke a little bit about bridging the gap between remote on-site um, working and working with um, Teams devices. You can obviously work across multiple devices. Working from a Teams um, meeting from your mobile device, your tablet or your PC um, is, is a fantastic advantage, but you can also work cross-functionally within, within different teams within your organization or teams that are across the world in different organizations and Teams absolutely encourages that as well. It's a fantastic tool for just driving um, clean and and fast collaboration um, within your organization delivering engaging and inclusive meetings from anywhere so microsoft have also thought very hard about keeping the meeting experience very immersive and ensuring that people don't get meeting fatigue there are a number of tools that microsoft have created to ensure that this doesn't happen one of the biggest is together mode as you can see on the left hand side of the screen here, there are a lot of people that appear to be in the same room. Of course, they're not. What Microsoft have done is they've taken all of the camera images and stitched them into a virtual canvas. This, while fun, actually has a psychological effect to ensure that people stay a lot more engaged. So Microsoft have done this to ensure that there is a virtual space, but that everybody stays a lot more engaged. On the right hand side of the screen, Microsoft have done a similar thing where you can customize your backgrounds. The reason they do this is if you don't have a customized background, then they have done studies to show that you, you are less likely to stay focused on the foreground. In other words, the person speaking. Eyes will wander and people won't stay as focused. And then similarly, um, the ability to provide interactive and video broadcasts to large audiences. My Microsoft Teams can actually broadcast to up to 10,000 people. That, that is a massive broadcast capability that, that Microsoft Teams can deliver now. So, Productivity gains for your business. So at the core of everything that Microsoft does, they want to ensure that the, the central nervous system or teams is providing you solid productivity gains for your business. And at the heart of this is applications. Jared touched on applications um, lightly. We're gonna go deeper on this and we're gonna show you why applications really do deliver a fantastic amount of uh, benefit to your business.
So the, the, the first is, is application integrations with Teams. As Jared said, there are 3,500 applications that you can add into Teams today. And adding these are very, very simple. You simply search for an application, you click on that application, you say add, and then literally a minute later, that application is added and it is ready to use. Now that's for one user. If you want to add the application for an entire organization, it actually is not much harder. You simply go to the admin portal and you apply the application as a policy. And then about an hour later, the application gets applied across the whole organization. So adding applications is very, very simple. Now, what's the benefit? What's the payback for that? Well, the payback for that is if you studies have shown that if you add an application that is relevant to your organization, the cost saving Microsoft are finding is anywhere between two to three weeks payback in, in terms of hours per employee for using an application that is integrated with Microsoft Teams. That is a massive return on investment for using an application that is core to your business to help you drive workflow. The next one is developing applications with low or no code tools. And these, these tools are already part of the Office 365 suite, namely Power Tools. Power Tools is a fantastic suite that allows you to develop applications that can lay inside of Microsoft Teams very, very easily. And you can develop tools within a week. This is a development time that is decreased from six months previously down to a week. Imagine if you were to pay a developer six months development time. Now you can do this yourself using low or no code tools within a week. This is a massive, massive cost saving. And on the plus side, it then makes your business more, more um, uh, efficient by, by giving a three, a, a two to three week payback per year. This is massive, a massive return on investment for your business. The last point that Microsoft are finding is that 90% of businesses that use applications within Teams are experiencing productivity gains. And why wouldn't they? If, if you've got an accounting firm and they start using some accounting software within Teams, or you've got a healthcare company and they start using a healthcare app that is relevant to their business and it's within Teams, within the tool they're using every day, it stands to reason that they're going to see productivity gains because they're working smarter, they're working faster. Within our own walls, we are developing applications that are Teams driven because we are seeing that our workers, our employees are using Teams at least 40 plus percent of the time our, our employees are in Teams. So it makes sense to drive our applications there. So let's take a look at some of the applications. You can see here, and this is just a snapshot of the applications, some great tools for HR, ADP, Talentsoft, from, fin from a finance perspective, you've got some great apps, industry-based solutions, project management based solutions, marketing, sales and CRM tools, productivity and collaboration. Again, this is just touching the surface. As mentioned previously, there are 3,500 3, plus applications in Teams today, crossing many, many different industries. And I'll show you when we get to the, um, the demonstration of the interface, how you can search these, very, very simple. Custom application development. Using Power Tools, as I mentioned, you can develop an app literally within a couple of hours. If you want to get more complex, you're going to get into days, maybe a week, maybe a couple of weeks, but the payoff is worth, is worth a lot more than that. And then finally, um, a Teams app will provide a customized experience for your business. It is definitely worth looking at either the off the shelf apps or, or developing an app to customize that experience for your business. It will pay you back dividends do, in doing so. 
So the next um, really, really great feature for teams is KPIs. KPIs provide information to employees, managers and leaders at varying levels. They provide information on productivity, on the interactions you've had and on the usage, how much you're using the Microsoft Office 365 suite. So for employees, this is particularly useful because you can see where you are and where you are not taking advantage of Office 365. For managers, of course it's useful, right? You can see which employees are being productive, which employees are getting the most out of these great tools. And then for leaders, well, this is useful because they can see from a cost perspective, how, what's the return on investment I'm getting out of Microsoft Office 365 and Teams combined? How productive are my employees this year versus last year? And then as a collective, how, how is Teams benefiting me in this efficiency drive? Or what do I need to do to make my employees that little bit more efficient next year? Or I've got this great team, I've got this great tool called OneDrive and my employees are utilizing it 5%. Um, my employees are saying they need um, file storage, but they don't know that they're not using OneDrive or they're not using, they're, talk, they're saying they need um, an intranet and they're not making use of SharePoint. There are so many fantastic use cases for why Insights can, can tell a story expose inefficiencies and expose efficiencies for at an employee, manager and leadership level. It really is a fantastic, fantastic tool. So let's talk now through the Microsoft Teams interface. As I said earlier, this is the central nervous system that ties together the whole Microsoft ecosystem. I work with hundreds of employees and this is how we collaborate. Yes, we do pick up the phone still, but this is our this is how we collaborate on multiple levels. We chat, we talk on video, we 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 send messages, we 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 leave messages, there's voicemail functionality. We really communicate and collaborate through this tool. We, we send files, we collaborate, sharing files. This has become our central nervous system for getting our day-to-day -day work completed on projects that are ongoing and, and, and getting business moving forward. So as you'll see here, the pane is, is pretty simple. On the left-hand side, there is a navigation pane with different windows that it allows you to access from activity to chat to teams to calendar calls files and so forth on the top there is a teams command pane that pane allows you to perform searches open a chat window initiate commands and we'll, we'll go into a little more depth and detail on that as you can see here i initiated a command i i typed in forward slash unread and what it did is it, it returned all of my messages that I had not read yet. The next command, I typed in Jared's name. I typed in Jared Ruth. And then once I hit enter, what it did is it returned my last communication with Jared with all the history. So I didn't, the message wasn't lost. My history was all there. And I had a conversation with Jared about some marketing dialogue that we had back and forth. In the top right is kind of the meeting pane or the communication pane where I can initiate some different types of communication with Jared if I wish to do so. I could start a video call, I could start a voice call, I could initiate screen sharing if I happen to still be, if I happen to be on the phone with Jared. I could add additional users to this conversation. So a conversation doesn't just have to be between two people, it could be between 10 people. I could pop the chat out into a separate window. So I could have three chats in this interface or I could have 
three chats in separate windows, just like Windows 10 windows, right? Then there is the chat window at the bottom. Here's where I type my messages in, or people conventionally thought this is the only thing you could do in this window. However, there's a lot more you can do in a Teams chat window. This supports plain or rich text. I can set delivery windows. Think of this as a priority. Is this message high priority? Is it low priority? Is it somewhere in the middle? High priority means that, that Teams is gonna ensure that Jared gets this message. It's gonna keep bugging him and bugging him until he reads it. There is a function where it supports emojis. Anybody who's texted in the last 20 years knows what an emoji is. At mentions is a really cool feature. It allows me to at mention somebody in our organization. So I could mention one of my employees in a conversation to Jared, and it would make that employee aware of the conversation without bringing them into the conversation. It would therefore become an activity for that employee. I could schedule a meeting from here. I could add URLs, I could add files, and I could reference applications too. It's a really, really powerful chat window. Previously, you saw me type in an at command. I typed in forward slash unread. There are also a bunch of other at commands that allow me to do a number of things. I could change my status. So status is, am I available? I could change it to away. I could change it to busy. I could change it to DND or do not disturb. I could also change the navigation panes, these panes on the left. I could ask a question. So there is um, a really cool feature called who forward slash who, and I could ask a question. So there's a, a little bit of AI built into Teams where you can ask questions. And then I can also find out information. So I could um, use the what's new, or I could use the forward slash org and start finding out some organizational information about employees in the organization. Some really, really rich features here. The next one is kind of similar to the forward slash command, but it's it's the keyboard shortcut version. So I can um, start performing actions or functions using keyboard shortcuts. And if you're as old as I am, and you understand, you know, if you're a, a, a Windows sort of 3.1 person going back to that, then keyboard shortcuts were it. You had to know every single keyboard shortcut on the planet. And I I started out with, you know, control, um, control D, which took you back, closed all your windows down and took you back to the Windows desktop. That was it for me. Well, keyboard shortcuts are it. And, and I like to learn the Windows um, or the keyboard shortcuts for apps because I like to do things quickly. It's the quickest way to get things done. And this list is great. So just, I'm not gonna go through these. Suffice to say that you can do a lot of things with them. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can admit people to meetings, you can turn on, turn off your camera, you can toggle your camera on and off. There's a number of great features, right? Um, what we have done in the deck, which we will dis distribute, is we've given um, a sort of glossary of the commands and the keyboard shortcuts. So really, really great features um, and it's worth exploring. This is a rich, rich interface. So um, the next one we kind of click on here is Teams itself. And which is what Teams is named after. So a little back, um, little backstory here. Teams was named after um, getting work done or a collection of people driving towards a collective or, of projects or outcomes for an organization. So, so I am a director of product management. My collective or outcome is to drive projects or, or drive products rather forward to get them into market. That is my team. My team would be product management. Now, below that, there is this concept of channels. So a channel for me, my team would be product management. My channels would be individual products, getting individual products to market. I might productize a product called backup. I might productize another product called disaster recovery. Those would be individual channels for me. So why is a channel a subset of a team? Well, a team is my broader team and the and the cross-functional teams I might, might work with. 
the channel would be a subset team of that, a smaller team working on a smaller project. Um, Teams also allows you to functionally do things and work within either the broader team or the or the subset channel. You can start a chat, you can set up a meeting, you can email a team or a channel, you can view the team or the channel info and you can get the email addresses, you can open the team or the channel in SharePoint. It is incredibly powerful and rich functionality that is driven towards a goal and driven towards collaboration within those two different concepts, a team and a channel. Very, very powerful. So the next is the calendar functionality. This is really, really great. It is super rich as well. This is actually, for, for everybody who may or may not know, this is your Outlook calendar being displayed within Teams. And you can navigate like you can in your Outlook calendar. You can go forward a week, backwards a week. You can display just one day. You can display the work week, which it does um, by default, or you can display the full week, including the weekends. Um, you can use shortcut keys to display it. You can also um, add a new meeting. You can meet now or you can use live events. So there's some good, rich functionality that comes with this. It is a fantastic tool that allows you to do a lot of the day to day work from within this interface. So as we go through these um, different tabs and these different portals, hopefully you can see that why we refer to um, Teams as sort of the hub or the central nervous system, because it brings all these things together. So the next one is calling. Now, I will preface this with Teams has to have, you have to have a Microsoft 365 plan that supports uh, a calling plan in order to see this dialer. But even if you don't have the dialer, you will still have all of this contact information and it will default and it will load all of your colleagues in for you. Um, if you have the dialer, if you have a calling plan, then great. You will see the dialer and you'll be able to make outbound phone calls per your calling plan. Um, but you will have some rich functionality like being able to make a phone call, make a video call. You'll be able to certainly do chat, edit and manage and and um, organize your contacts into groups. You could have a group called internal contacts, um, my team, um, the marketing team, um, external contacts, um, you know, where your imagination takes you. Very, very rich functionality. Um, the next one is um, files. Now, we spoke a little bit about Teams being built on the backbone of Office 365 and Teams allows you to, by default, it connects to two file stores. It connects to OneDrive and it connects to um, SharePoint. OneDrive being your individual file store, hence the name One, and SharePoint connecting to the shared file store or the company file store, hence the name Share. Um, and so um, the files you're seeing here are my recent files and they're organized by name type, um, last modified and location. And um, down in the bottom left here, you will see that you can also reference external cloud-based storage. So that might be um, Google Drive. It might be another file store, but you can you can add that if you wish. Box, Google Drive, whatever it may be, you can add an external file store and it will it will reference those. It will connect to it. Um, you can add that and it's a great, great feature. OK, next um, we've talked this one up a lot, <laughs> so so hopefully um, we don't we don't uh, fail to impress here. So apps. Um, this one, have a look at it. It's um, applications are amazing in 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 Teams. As I said, thirty five hundred applications. As you look down, as you look down this list here, you will see. Obviously, firstly, you can search for an application. When I search for applications, um, I. I did a search the other day and I looked for just bots, right? Um, and um, so we're talking things that, that, that return information, a chat bot, a automated um, um, bot. And 
it returns something like 60 different bots that integrate with services and return information. Um, there are um, there are applications that are education based, productivity based, project management based, sales based, um, you, you name it, right? Um, the the um, they are developing applications all the time. As we said, 3,500 applications a year ago, there were 2,000. This um, or just shy of is is basically doubled in the last year, and it, and this is not slowing down. People are seeing that organisations are embracing teams now so much that um, the application um, uh, the applications being added to here are, are just exploding. Um, so the 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 amount of um, applications being added here and the quality of them. Um, is is is, is mind blowing, um, and so I would I would say I, I I I'm going out on a limb here. There's probably not an industry or not many industries where there aren't applications that can benefit from them, um, either directly or indirectly for something that their business is doing, accounting or or, or whatever it may be. Um, and with that, I think that uh, brings us back to the live poll results, Jared. Awesome. That was great, Duncan. Really appreciate you going through that. You know, it's it's fascinating when you think through, um, you know, trying to cover all of this incredible detail in a short uh, live event is 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 challenging because, in fact, there are so many um, features and benefits of using Microsoft Teams. But yeah, let's take a look at the live poll results. So we asked, you know, what solution are you using today for meetings and collaboration? And, you know, I think the interesting thing about this was, you know, most of you out there are currently using Microsoft Teams based on the solutions here, a solid 70% of you. Um, but I think what's interesting, Duncan, is we also recognize that, you know, I think people are using a mix of these tools, right? Uh, based on the survey results, it seems that um, maybe you're using, you know, Microsoft Teams for some things, you know, Zoom for others. Uh, but what's what's incredible is, you know, really um, there, you can do so much through a simple so a single interface and single tool. Uh, pretty incredible stuff. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, there there is uh, Microsoft has obviously come up as a dominant um, player um, and, and, and the, the strength there is um, definitely um, due to its strong integration with um, it's Microsoft's strong integration with um, the Office 365 suite. Um, Microsoft also um, have a very, very strong roadmap and Microsoft have kept um, bleeding edge and the amount of rollouts, uh, new feature sets coming out with the Teams um, solution is uh, very, very aggressive, very rapid as well. Yeah, absolutely. No doubt about it. Well, hey, so look, um, you know, I think I think we've identified the fact that Teams is an incredibly uh, powerful tool and, and it's uh, it's pretty just easy to, to make sense of why you should use it for your business. That, that makes sense. Um, you know, the one thing I would say, though, is, is you know, even though Teams is really powerful and, and Microsoft 365 is powerful at that, you know, it's really important to have a, a partner that you can trust to help you uh, put it all together. And that's where I think Cox Business and Microsoft Teams is really better together, right? You know, as I mentioned before, we offer a whole uh, a, a whole suite of cloud services. Um, but when you think about Microsoft Teams and, and Microsoft 365, you know, it's really important to, to be with a managed solutions provider that you trust. And, and there, you know, there's a lot of a lot of uh, entities out there that would be happy to sell you a license. They'd be happy to, you know, to get you, um, you know, kind of the software or, or the, the platform behind Teams. But with regard to providing that end user and even, you know, and other support, uh, it's just not there. So, so one of the great things, you know, about Cox Business is that we've got, you know, an entire team of, of rapid response uh, service 
desk people that, that are there and willing to help. Um, the other great thing is you know, we're Microsoft Gold Partners. So, you know, you and I, Duncan, I think we talked to Microsoft, you know, it's at, well, multiple times a week. I was going to say once a week, but it's a lot more than that. And uh, so we've got, you know, essentially the back channels into Microsoft. We work with them frequently. And so, you know, we, we have the ability to connect and, and, and understand the product better than most, right? Um, another key important part of this is, you know, as you're migrating on to Teams and you're, you know, you're taking your existing services over, uh, it's really important to have a partner that understands how to migrate those services. When you think about your Active Directory and everything, just making sure that you get it set up correctly, um, it's really, really critical to have that, that uh, you know, known entity that can help you through that. Uh, another great function, and we talk about this a lot as well, is Cox Business will actually, you know, with, with Microsoft Teams and our other cloud products, will provide end, end user help desk support. So, you know, in, in, uh, in these type of applications, sometimes it's even challenging for an IT manager or maybe the, the individual who signed the contract, a business owner, to get, get support. But in our world, you know, we go well beyond that. And we we actually will will support your end users. So let's say your end user is having an issue, um, rather than them escalating into your department, we actually offer where they can call into our rapid response team and get support um, directly, which is pretty unique. Um, predictable pricing is one we hear a lot as well. So you know we we don't believe in in creating scenarios where you're surprised by your by what your price is at the end of the month. We We'd like to keep the surprises to, you know, your big wins in your business. What we do love to do, though, is make sure that you have a predictable, reliable pricing model. So when you plan your months and years and as you add new employees and you add, you know, more capacity, you know exactly what that's going to look like and, and we can get you there. Um, as mentioned, you know, Cox Business also has an entire portfolio of cloud connectivity, uh, of connectivity and cloud solutions. You know, and the nice thing about working with a partner like Cox is, you know, not only can we take care of your internet connectivity, your voice connectivity, you know, and other, other um, you know, core concerns, we can also uh, manage the entire, uh, the entire portfolio of your cloud, of cloud connectivity as well. So whether it's, you know, desktop as a service, infrastructure as a service, managing your security, managing disaster recovery and backup, even SD-WAN, we can take care of all that. And then last but absolutely not least, 24 by 7 award-winning customer uh, support. We're really, really proud of this. Um, you know, last year in 2020, 2020, we, uh, we actually averaged 4.8 out of 5 stars in our rapid response teams. And that, that covers the gamut from, you know, business owners down to end users really voting for us and telling us what a great job we did as far as you know, providing that support. So something that I'm pretty proud of. I know you are as well, Duncan. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I, I, I think, um, you know, we, 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 we don't just provide, uh, there are a lot of providers who provide, um, you know, teams and they do it in a, a resale capacity. Um, I, I think the, the one thing I'd add here is we have a solid um, service wrapper around the, um, around this that is very very customer centric. Yes, absolutely. Well, good stuff. Well, hey, you know, as we were talking, um, actually a lot of questions came in. So unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be able to answer all of them, but we'll go ahead and send it out after after this event and uh, and answer everybody's questions. But the first one uh, we have, Duncan, is is uh, I'll just ask ask the questions, and, and you or I can answer them. Uh, go ahead. Is there a feature in Teams uh, to allow a guest account for employees that do not have a company email, so they can receive email uh, memos, etc., or would they need to have a Microsoft 365 account? Um, so, not for so 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 there is a um, there is an ability to allow for guest um, access to invite people into Teams for meetings. Um, there also similarly is a feature that extends that for file sharing. So Microsoft um, uh, didn't have um, these features going back a year or two ago, but they've enriched um, the platform to allow it for Teams and they've enriched it 
uh, to allow it for uh, file sharing for external file sharing. So yes, that does that 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 facility does exist for both uh, both of those today. Excellent, very good. Okay, the next question is regarding the reports you showed. Are those within Office 365 or do they require external applications? That's a great question. Um, so the reports um, for analytics um, are in, they are native to Office 365. Um, they are accessible from um, the um, uh, from the admin console. Um, so when I say they're accessible from there, um, the the um, the setup of them is managed from there. So you go in, you manage the um, um, the the setup and um, who 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 actually gets them and frequency, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the actual um, reports are sent to users on um, a daily a daily basis. So for example, um, I, I get um, the uh, analytical report for myself um, on a daily basis every morning as, as, as Jared does as well. So we see um, you know how we're doing and, and, and um, it gives some really great insights into um, uh, what um, sort of emails we might have um, pending and open. It's, it's actually some really smart AI that this has. So yeah, it's it's all native to, to to the Microsoft suite. It's really really some cool technology. Excellent, thank you. Um, yeah, I think we got a couple time for a couple more. So next one is: Do you have any recommendations for handling file permissions associated with Teams, especially for guests? Yeah, so um, I think I touched on this uh, slightly before. Teams itself does not manage uh, files file permissions. Um, Teams actually hooks into OneDrive and into SharePoint for file permissions. So the file permissions are actually handled from those two applications within Office 365. So you're, if you're doing um, file sharing, whether within your organization or externally, you're going to manage those file permissions from OneDrive or you're going to manage those file permissions from um, uh, from SharePoint. And then similarly, if you hook into an external file share, if you hook into Google Drive or you hook into Box, um, those file permissions similarly will be managed from those um, those file shares. So um, yeah, it will be the file share itself that um, owns and manages the file permissions. Great yeah. question. Yeah, excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Um, last one here and, and, and we'll wrap it up is, is there an ability or how can you federate between companies that are collaborating? And, and I guess the question would be, you know, maybe it's two companies, maybe it's, you know, a parent company and a, and a, and a you know, and a daughter company or of some kind. Uh, is there a way to federate those two instances of teams? Yeah, absolutely. There is. Um, so we're actually um, we're actually in that situation ourselves, where uh, you know um, Cox um, own um, a, a, a number of uh, a number of companies, and um, they're all um, using Teams. So they want to federate that that communication. Now, I will say there is um, two ways to to um, to to really federate. You can you can go all in or you can um, do a, a sort of lower level of federation and it's all it all has to do with the level of certification and trusting and um, I think um, we really want to follow up with sending a document on this because Microsoft do um, a little bit better job than I I would explaining explaining this I've looked into it but our admins are the ones who are really greasing the wheels and doing the work on this um, but I, I, I know enough here to to explain that that um, you can you can um, you can federate certain elements such as you can allow sort of you know uh, access to your directories and you can allow um, file sharing etc cetera, etc cetera, or and, and then you can expose sort of everything and so what I think we'll do is we'll follow up with a document that sort of explains the varying levels at which you can trust um, because that at the end of the day is what you're doing. You're trusting certificates between organizations here. 
Um, so let's do this. Let's follow up with a, a, a document that sort of explains that. But the short answer is yes, you can. Um, and, and it comes down to trusting certifications and permissions between two, two um, instances of, of teams, in essence. Excellent. Excellent. Thanks, Duncan. You got so, it. Uh, so that about wraps up uh, today's se session. We're out of time. You know, I just want to say thank you so much for joining the, today's Cloud Streams event. This is the first in 2021. We're going to have a, a, many more throughout the year, so stay tuned and we'll be sending out information on that. Uh, in the meantime, though, please uh, connect with your with your Cox Business Sales Representative or go ahead and visit us on the web at www.coxbusiness.com forward slash cloud. Uh, you know, we, we talk about Microsoft Teams and, and, and 365 there, but we also have you know, a lot of information about our other cloud services and core services as well. And then uh, we've also created a LinkedIn group. It's, it's a cloud Q&A group, um, and it's really just surrounding questions about cloud. So we've got a team of professionals standing by ready to talk to you about, you know, any questions you have, whether it's Teams related or any other uh, cloud question you have. Uh, we, we'd be happy to, to jump in there and help. So, so thanks again for attending today. Appreciate your time and have a fantastic uh, day.